So a lot of this conference is about uh, data pipelines, data platforms, and data infrastructure. And uh, uh, those, are, those are still probably the bulk of what we as a community do. But once we have data in place, we normally do two, two things with data, right? So the first is improve our decision making using BI. The second is to enable some form of automation using machine learning. So we've long known that it's important to secure our data platforms and infrastructure. But what about our analytics? Are there ways of doing analytics that still protect privacy? It turns out there are now some, uh, some simple techniques that one can use. So I'll go over a few of them uh, today. So first, let's look at BI. Uh, so for many companies, BI is really a SQL database. And, uh, so you can actually do secure computation on a SQL database. Uh, companies use things like hardware enclaves or encryption. Um, but what about, uh, tech, what, what about techniques that preserve privacy? So I want to highlight a, a recent collaboration between Uber and UC Berkeley's Rice Lab. So the nice thing about their system is it allows data analysts to continue to do what they normally do which is to write reports using SQL. And they can write these reports, and, this re and the results of these reports will protect users' privacy. So you give them access control, but you don't, you don't risk privacy. This, uh, this uh, system is in pilot stage at Uber. It's available at GitHub. And the great thing about it is it, you can use it with any SQL database. So you can do BI, privacy preserving, preserving BI, right now. But can uh, differential privacy for BI scale in an age of IoT? The answer is yes, because we have two concrete examples from Apple and Google. So they use uh, differential privacy for their BI as far as studying how users interact with their devices. So for example, they, uh, they use uh, uh, differential privacy for BI on things like browsing statistics and typing behavior. So BI. Uh, that's privacy per serving is available and you can do it today. What about machine learning? Uh, so I'm going to focus on deep learning because it's a hot method, uh, but a lot of what I'm go going to describe uh, applies to other machine learning methods. So deep learning, because you can train it asynchronously, uh, lends itself to shared learning. So by shared learning, I mean uh, imagine a scenario where you have a uh, a few companies who want a, to learn a shared model, an accurate model, more accurate than they would normally be able to learn just using their own data, but they don't want to share data across organizations. It turns out that uh, you can do that with deep learning because of the asynchronous training. 